Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ryan Rampersad, and today I will be talking to you about the late Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO107. Let's get started. Let's begin, of course, by talking about the price. There were two Note models for the first time ever with the Note 20 line. There was a smaller and stripped down version starting at about $1,000, and then there was a premium version, an ultra version, at $1,299. And of course, that's the version I got, and that's what we'll be talking about here today. So let's talk about the display and some of the other physical qualities. So it is slightly shorter, but slightly wider than the S20 Ultra. That's what I was using before. It's slightly larger than the previous Note 10 Plus. And weight-wise, it's kind of similar. But there's a caveat there. The center of gravity with these phones is all out of whack because, of course, the new camera modules that have been coming in these phones since the S20 Ultra. Some of the special features, of course, you know, you you, you name it with the screen, they only get better with time. Uh, this was using an LPZO. Basically, it gets really bright. In addition to that, the S20 Ultra introduced fast refresh rate up to 120 hertz. This phone was able to offer adaptive 120 hertz. Now, what that meant, the phone ramped down as needed to save you battery life, which is great. And so if you were scrolling and moving, it would ramp up. And if you weren't doing anything and you were just kind of reading static text, it could ramp down. I never really noticed this particular feature in practice, but I think in in direct comparison, you can you can definitely see it. And once you kind of get used to it and you see kind of a different device type and uh, maybe it's a lower end phone, you definitely will start to notice it. Okay, well, let's talk about some of the physical qualities of the Note 20 Ultra. It's very boxy, and that's kind of the design language that Samsung picks for these Note phones. Now, because it's so boxy, it's actually a little bit easier to hold than the S20 Ultra. That phone had such a chunky body, it was so thick, whereas the Note actually feels sort of more ornate. So you can actually kind of grip your uh, hands around it with a little bit easier time. Now, with that said, you know, it is still stupidly large, but you do get kind of used to it. Now, it is lighter, or at least feels that way, but because it has this insane camera module, which is less insane than the S20 Ultra, you, you can never really grip it the way you want to because it just is so top heavy. One of the things that isn't here in our, you know, review list is does it look like jewelry but there is a part of me that says yep this sure does look like jewelry when i ordered this i actually ordered the wrong phone <laughs> i intended to order a black one you know samsung always comes up with funny color names but i actually accidentally ordered mystic bronze now it actually reminds me a lot of one of my favorite phones which was the i believe it's called nexus 6p that is that what it's called? Pretty sure that's what it's called. Yes, it was called the Nexus 6P. And the reason it reminds me of that is it had just a little bit of fancy detail to it. Uh it you know, it just has this kind of upper upper luxury look to it. Not that that's necessary or useful at all, but it really does feel like a premium product and it looks the part as well. Okay, so some other interesting stuff. Charging, yep, it can sure do that. 45 watt charging. Um, but it didn't actually have that in the box, so you don't you don't get to use it, I guess. Uh it has no headphone jack, of course, but it does have type C, which means you can do pretty much anything you'd ever want, plus decks, which is great. Uh the speakers weren't radically different, but the buttons weren't radically different. Um one interesting thing is on the Note 10 Plus. The buttons were on the other side, but when the S20 Ultra came out, the buttons were on the right side, and now the Note with the Note 20 Ultra, it returns to the right as well. No Bixby button though, now it's just a unified power button. Okay, now let's talk specs. This has a Snapdragon 865 Plus, 
and as 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 far as processors go from from Qualcomm, it was totally fine. Not no no interesting stories there. They could have paid an extra dollar to Qualcomm so that Qualcomm could have produced an ultra skew. That would have been funny, but they didn't do that. Uh, as far as RAM goes, I think 12 gigabytes for such a high end device is really good, and you can have no less, of course, coming from the S20 Ultra, where it was first kind of introduced as a standard SKU model. Now, this is kind of weird. Um, the storage in this device actually changed. So the Note 10 Plus had a base storage of 256 plus SD, which I think is a great option. These new upper tier SKUs would come in, and then we would start to see these um, new storage sizes kind of trickle down to lower end models, and that would have been lovely. No, that didn't happen, though. Instead, the S20 Ultra came with 128 gigs of storage, and it offered a 512 bump, but no more. No more no more 256 base model. So the Note 20 Ultra does the same exact thing as the S20 Ultra, and it also doesn't offer a, a reasonable baseline size. Now, is 128 reasonable? Uh, it is actually reasonable. Is... 256 much better plus SD. It is way better plus SD. Okay, so let's get to the camera. As I talked about with the S20 Ultra review many, many, many months ago, I thought and um, continue to think that between these two phones, these are the worst cameras in any of the Samsung phones ever. Why do I say that? Well, prior to this, I had the S8, the S9, the S10, the Note 10 Plus, and every one of those phones got progressively better cameras. They were sharp, they were crisp, they were vibrant. Everything was perfectly adequate about them, and they got progressively better over time. And then, the bad thing happened. The S20 Ultra came out. And since then, the photos have become blurrier, less crisp, the macro capabilities have been worsening in, in general ways because of the shallow depth of field issues. Focus was a primary problem with the S20 Ultra. You could not focus on things uh, in a reasonable amount of time. If you moved even the slightest bit, you would get, kind of lose focus. So with the Note 20 Ultra, there were some improvements. With the addition of laser focus, uh, you could actually focus on some stuff, which is great. Now, whether you actually needed to focus on anything remains to be seen because the focus didn't actually help the softness issues that the photos generally have. And so if you take a photo and you kind of do it blind, so you not you don't really look at the viewfinder, you'll probably get a blurry photo. You really have to focus on something so that the software and the laser modules can really hone in on it and then take it. It's generally fixed. It's okay. It's passable. But when I compare Note 10 and S10 photos to this phone, it's just it's just a class of it's a, it's a it's a class of difference, uh, a magnitude of difference. I could tell that the photos were different. Now that said, they're passable. I print out photos every year that I take from my phones, and as a printed photo, they're totally adequate. You'll never know that they were really soft unless you compress them and then the macro blocks kind of pick up on that softness and kind of ruin everything. You know, it just kind of depends on what you're doing with it. Now, there's another feature, I guess, of the Note camera line that's something notable to talk about, I suppose. And that, of course, is this zoom thing. Well, Samsung really bet the farm here on space zoom with the S20 Ultra line. It certainly didn't help uh, the product excel with its lackluster camera system in general. It is handy to zoom in sometimes. Um, there's been a pandemic. I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, sometimes it's nice to read signage very far away without going to where all the people are. So what do you do? Well, instead of carrying binoculars all around, you use your uh, super zoom functionality and you zoom right on in there. And that's actually really cool. I've done it a few times. with the Note 20 Ultra, you no longer have 100x zoom. Not that you should have been using that ever for any reason. Instead, 
you have 50x slash 30x depending on who you ask and what mode you're in. Is it is it fine? Is it is it good? Well, you can certainly use it for things, uh, and it it performs about as well as the uh, S20 Ultra was performing. So nothing really su surprising there or interesting about the zoom. Don't zoom in a lot. You won't you won't be happy about it. Don't do it. <laughs> It's fine to zoom in a little bit, but don't don't do it too much. So, what about this camera just in general? So again, I'm going to continue to believe that since the Note 10 Plus, the cameras haven't been good, and despite over the many months that I've actually actively used this Note 20 Ultra, it's just its camera still produces pretty weak, pretty soft photos. That's that's kind of the deal. Uh, we'll touch on software briefly. There's only really one thing that's notable about the software. <sighs> I can finally use Android 10 gestures. I had been waiting years to use the modern gesture system. You couldn't do it on the S10. You could maybe eke by by doing some hackery with the Note 20. Uh, you could maybe eke by by doing some hackery with the Note 10 Plus but you couldn't use new gestures with any third-party launchers, so I don't think that counts. But finally, you can use them here, and it's great. Those gestures are wonderful, and it's it, it just took so long to get them here with third-party launch. It is in February of 2021. Should you buy this? Again, I opened this episode with the late Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and to be honest, this may be the last note that Samsung ever releases. It does seem that in the marketplace, the Note line has now become effectively the same as the S line. With the S21 Ultra being available with pen support, do you even need the S Pen? Notice that in this entire episode, this in the final thoughts section is when I am mentioning the S Pen. It doesn't matter to me, but if it matters to you, this might be the last time you can get that S Pen that actually has a home inside of the note. Well, unless you like foldable phones and $1,500 base models, because that might be what happens when those new phones, the folds and the flips, come out later this year. And they may have the stylus external, but maybe they have advanced their tech so much that they are in fact now internal. So if you were going to waste $1,000 on a phone and you wanted a stylus to do it and you don't have a note already, this is the phone to get. No other Huawei, no other Xiaomi, no other Motorola stylus. Nothing compares to the quality of the Note line anywhere. It just doesn't. If you had to pick between the Note 20 Ultra and the S20 Ultra, don't even acknowledge that the S20 Ultra even happened. If now you're listening to this and you think, well, what about the S21 Ultra? Well, that is a more interesting question because the S21 Ultra has pen support. So if you wanted a slightly smaller phone, but you wanted to exchange the pen for that, cool, that's a good change. Or if you want to exchange battery life in exchange for a built-in pen, you can do that too. If you don't mind your pen being on the outside, you can buy one of these crazy cases and put your pen in the case with the S21 Ultra, and that would work too. There's so many options from Samsung now, the story's a little muddled here. But the question is, is this the last note? It might be. So if you want one, get it while it lasts, because it's going to end soon. So that's kind of what I think in rapid fire version of the Note 20 Ultra. And that's all for now. Have a good one. You can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and Ryan Amar, and of course on my website, ryanrampersad.com. This show and many of our other shows are licensed under Creative Commons. Visit our subreddit if you'd like to chat with us at reddit.com slash r slash the nexus tv. If you'd like to support us, find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the nexus tv. The nexus, the nexus, the nexus tv. Podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.